So today I actually have a topic that's a little bit, yeah, it's a little bit edgier. Um, and I remember the other day, like, I want to do this as a podcast. So this will be kind of our warm up for the podcast. So for those people that watch these videos later and have read the email, you'll notice that um, I kind of trolled people a little bit. There's something that that IT professionals are really, really bad at. And I'm traditionally, it's what I score high on my Enneagrams with. That's what makes me weird in IT. When you ever, whenever I'm in a local IT department, I am weird. And you know, I've been told that by HR, I've been told that by peers, like I just don't think the way normal engineers do. Okay, So easy. Um, I actually got stopped in the middle of an interview once where the, um, the interviewer stopped and said, Adam, what the heck? Okay, so we've interviewed, you're the 15th person we've interviewed, and you are by far the most unique. What, what is up with you? I actually <laughs> you was mean, asked that in the nice. middle of an interview. You was being uh, nice. <laughs> and I'm like sitting there, I'm like, okay, uh, did I just lose this job? <laughs> like, you know, like I'm sitting here like, oh, is this one of the interview questions? Like what makes you different? And um, no, they were honestly interested in the fact that um, my brain is just more creative. Um, and I have a, in my Enneagram, I have no structure, which is odd that I've created a framework as a, as a professional, but <laughs> my Enneagrams have no structure, no process to them. Like I am all yellow and I think red social and, um, and analytical. And so what that means is, is I, I naturally look forward and look at strategy and I naturally avoid actively doing process. And whereas engineers traditionally are analytical and process. Yeah. And so you like to solve problems and then create patterns to follow. So you don't have to think about them next time. You can think about other things and you yeah. avoid people. And, avoid people. and so I got that part down really good. <laughs> what that makes you in, in the traction world, it makes you a really great integrator. You're really great at taking an existing problem, solving it, and creating a repeatable solution. And that is fantastic. But it also means you're not good. You don't naturally, I shouldn't say you're not good. You're not a natural forward thinker. So, you know, you'll see technology come out. It's like, oh, that was a really cool idea. And you'll adopt it early and you'll, you'll work with it. But you didn't see it coming. Yeah. A visionary is sitting there going, okay, you know, like, what's the next step? What, you know, they're, they're thinking they like the blank canvas and they like to start to paint. And they like to think, okay, how do I do this? An engineer will see a blank canvas and paint the thing that they were taught to paint. Yeah. That's yeah. the best way I can explain the difference. Both are talented artists, but a visionary will create something completely new. An engineer will repeat what they've done. Yeah. So Bob Ross, he, I used to watch Bob Ross, uh, and who didn't? Um, he was really great and the way he painted was easy to repeat. It wasn't creative, but you, it, you could tell somebody who was a Bob Ross enthusiast, enthusiast because their style of painting reflected his style, which was very good. <laughs> and it was better than I can do. I can't, I can't paint Bob Ross style, I'm tor terrible at that, uh, but if you give uh, somebody like a, a truly talented uh, artist a paintbrush, you look at a Kincaid, you look at these people who have developed their own style. Those are visionaries. Yeah. And in the IT world, most people I have worked with are not visionaries. They're actually really dangerous in IT departments. Can you tell me why, Skip? Why is a visionary dangerous? Oh, because they're gonna screw stuff up. <laughs> Yep. Yes, a visionary is that employee you have who did something different rather than doing it in the expected way. Yeah, that's the one where you walked in and you went to like work on the server or firewall and go, "What the hell?" Yeah, <laughs> you know, they you look down and they didn't follow a standard disk array or they didn't uh, install the software in the app uh, in the right order or they didn't follow a pattern and there's no discernible like. Like what the, heck? you sit there and you scratch your head and you sit there and you end up cleaning it up. How yeah. do I know this? Because I am the guy you clean up. <laughs> because, you know, the, I figured it out. Like back in my day, I figured out how to be a firewall admin on my own with a few people guiding me. And so I'm sure there's some people who walked into one of my firewalls and goes, 
why would he do this? There's a much, there's a much better way if you would just follow this particular pattern. Right, yeah. Um, so your visionaries exist in your department and they're dangerous because they don't like to follow patterns. They don't naturally follow the script. Yeah. They want to come up with something new. They're always moving on to the next thing. And to that end, they make bad engineers because they're not repeating and they're not being consistent. Yeah. So what happens is you have all these great engineers that, are, are that, that do a fantastic job of maintaining operations. Eventually these engineers get to the point in the career where they want to start their own companies. Mm-hmm. And when they start their own companies, they're not used to thinking outside of the box. They're used to thinking, okay, here's a great way to build a network based upon my experiences in the past. Mm-hmm. But they're not thinking in terms of the chances of an engineer starting an MSP and then thinking in a business sense right away, eh, very little. Very, yeah. You know, you give a, a salesperson a company, they're immediately going to be thinking business oriented. They won't yeah. think technical though. So you have to think about this flaw in your character. Does this apply to yourself? Are you bad at thinking, okay, I am running an MSP and I am great at leading my engineers. I'm great at teaching technology, but I'm really bad at thinking about what my clients need next. Yeah. I'm great at selling and showing them they need to get better PCs. I'm really great at showing them that they need to get better mobile device platforms and things that you already know. You're really great at putting all those puzzle pieces together, just like the Bob Ross painter. They're really great at feathering out and making those pine trees, those happy little trees. (laughs) They're great at that stuff. And it makes a great picture, but it's not going to be forward thinking. You're not going to, you're not going to go, well, maybe I should use watercolor instead of, instead of acrylic or in the, in the IT world, the chances of an engineer saying, I'm going to switch from FortiGate to Checkpoint. Yeah. I mean, I've been through those transitions. Gnashing of teeth, much weeping, clawing. No, I know this over here. It works. Something yeah. really bad has to happen with the technology for me to stop using it because I yeah. like the familiar. I know you give me a FortiGate and it is crashing. I know how to get it back up. You throw it away and get a new one. <laughs> you know, this is, yeah. you know well, I know yeah. that if this error happens, I've seen this error a hundred times before. You give me a checkpoint, that's a completely different way of running a firewall than a 48. Well, and I think, you know, so many engineer types, and we've mentioned this so many times before, you know, we, we show up and we have a lot of information and, and we feel our clients expect us to have answers to the questions. And, and in a technical sense, that's true. But we, I think, um, project that, that need or that expectation onto other areas of our expertise. And so we're hesitant to have these business conversations because we feel like we don't have all the answers. And, you know, that's really okay. You know, it's not about the answers. It's about the conversation. And once we realize that it's not about us going in them and giving them the how to on how to run their business. That's mm-hmm. not our job. It's our job to get in there and understand what their business needs and give them the how to for the technology. But if we're not, if we're not understanding their business, then the how to on the technology side is only going to be reactive. It's only going to be what we've seen before and what we think might work. And, you know, Again, when you look back to our business model for MSPs, we're all about being proactive, right? Mm-hmm. Well, you can't be proactive if you don't have a business conversation. Yeah. I, I just thought of another um, key way to describe, because I don't want to be insulting to people. I don't want people to think what, that they're somehow deficient because they're not a visionary. It's just a different mm-hmm. personality style. For instance, GM, Ford, pick your favorite auto manufacturer, <clears throat> are great well, well-led companies, but they're being shattered by a visionary right now. Yeah, that's true. They have every resource at their disposal and you can do your conspiracy theories or whatever. Why not? <laughs> Why the electric car hasn't been around? Go watch the documentary, Who Killed the Electric Car? It's, it's actually really good. Came out around 2004 or five. Anyways, um, <clears throat> the point is, is that Musk, visionary, 
very much. Yep. We're seeing a lot of disruption in the industry because of a visionary who happened to get a lot of cash off of PayPal, something they sold. And all right, I've got a visionary with a ridiculous amount of funds at my disposal. What should I do with it? I want to try to get to Mars because this planet is <laughs> yeah. screwed. That's his vision. Yep. And so now we have all these things happening because he's thinking differently. You know, and mm -hmm. Apple is always about thinking differently, but what they really mean is just copy what somebody else does and do it better. That, yeah, I mean, that's the way Apple runs. Um, and the, the visionary in an MSP will say, what next? Mm -hmm. So what did, what did uh, technology consultants used to be called before they were called MSPs, Skip? Bobs. The bobs. You know what I mean? Like it used to be multi-service provider was the next thing to do. Yeah. You wanted to become a multi-service provider. And now there's a uh, multi-security service providers out there. And then yeah, there's, there's, there's different things, but what is the next inevitable step to an MSP? Uh, is it a BSP, a business service provider? Now that we're so integrated with businesses, what if you became something else? What if you like built your MSP in a way that you aligned with business processes first and technology just happened to be something you're good at? This is what a visionary does. This is why a lot of you are stuck in the low bid mode. If everybody is in it for fixing technology and they're all fixing the same technology, why should I pay more for you? than somebody else that's yeah. and so the somebody else comes and says i can do that for ten dollars a pc cheaper yeah there's got to be some sticking point and i think you you made the point the other day when you're we having a conversation uh skip that um people stick around because they like the engineer that they're with uh, yeah many times that's it and i i imagine a lot of you have this problem um and so what if that wasn't the case what yeah. if your MSP offered something different that can't be offered with any other, uh, with any other MSP? So <clears throat> that if you have an engineer who leaves or gets burned out or decides to move on to the corporate world or whatever, you don't lose these clients. Mm -hmm. And that is what we try to do in this humanize uh, framework is these touch points, the, the style of business that you do can't be found in your competitors. And, well, and, and even if somebody else in the town did the same thing, if they were also a humanized uh, MSP, that your styles, because of who you are, are so different. It's all about the owner of the MSP, yeah. not about the employees. Well, and let me, you know, kind of make a call out here to some of our smaller clients out there. And, you know, you really can differentiate yourself and kind of go back. We'll, we'll take the Tesla example since you brought it up, you know, uh, a year or two years ago, I'm not sure which, um, the number one selling car in Mercedes in, uh, in Germany, all right, in, in Germany was a Tesla S series. All right? Such a fun car. Uh, and, well, and, you know, you think about it in Germany, it's beating out the E-Class in the Mercedes and the 7 Series in the BMW. And, and these guys have been fighting it out. I mean, you know, I, I've, I've driven both an E and I haven't owned them, but I've had the opportunity to, to work with well, some high-end cars. Uh, and so I've had the opportunity to, you know, be in and around a lot of those higher-end vehicles. And those are really, really nice vehicles. And Mercedes and BMW have been you know, working out the, the smallest of details, you know, refining the process and making a great engineer project product. And then Tesla comes along with something totally different and disrupts, you know, this well-established industry and unseats the, the, you know, the predominant players in that. And I think an MSP can do the exact same thing. So if you're looking at your business, you're going, hey, it's just a handful of us here, you know, we're not going to be able to compete with the MSP down the street that's got 40 engineers or something like that. I, no, I, I would say you can. I would say you can go in. Are you going to take all, all their business away from them? No, probably not. 
but are you going to take on more business than you can probably handle? Yeah, I really do feel that that's an opportunity. And, you know, those are good problems to have, uh, yes. you know, so don't, don't feel like that you just need to whittle away in your own little area uh, by changing the way you operate, by differentiating yourself. You really are going to open up your market to a lot of great revenue streams. Very rarely in the um, corporate world do we see innovation and true visionaries come from the corporate world. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, most of the cool stuff we see is done by a small shop. Mm -hmm. Remember uh, the whole garage shop in the eighties, that was, if oh, yeah. you were in that Hewlett Packard, that, uh, um, that Silicon Valley at those days, yep. that, that's where the innovation happened. Well, so it was, uh, it was these giant conglomerates just get their cans kicked yeah. by people playing poker and who are just really, really, really nerdy in their garage. That's it. Wozniak and Jobs. Yep. Gates. Look at the Pirates of Silicon Valley. Watch that movie sometime. Um, for those of us who grew up then, we remember these little companies coming out of nowhere and just decimating the landscape, which yeah. is why there was such a fever in investing in technology companies in the 90s and in the dot-com bust. And then that recouping that happened up to 2005-ish that people started investing again, but intelligently. And we didn't really see much innovations until the phone race started, the mobile device race really got underway. But even research and motion, small company. Yeah. Palm true. start off as a small company. Yep. Apple still small company. These people overtook the giants in the field. And that's because of something called agility. The you can have a visionary in a corporate world and they're gonna get squashed because corporate worlds, large corporations are risk averse. Yeah. They right. have a good thing going Again, and they're gonna keep doing it smaller shops. So if you're in a shop where you're maybe 10 people or less, five people or less, you're the ones that are going to disrupt the market. Yeah. Not the okay, big so guys. They're yeah. going to maintain status quo. You're the ones that are going to disrupt, make a, sh uh, a crap ton of money, <laughs> make a crap ton of money, and then possibly get bought out by one of the bigger people yeah. as you show them how it's done. So vision setting says, is there a better way to run an MSP? And as a smaller shop, that gives you that competitive advantage. Because if it doesn't work out, you just pivot. You just move. Yeah. You there shift. You, you evolve yeah. your strategy. A bigger yeah. MSP takes that same risk. It takes them years to right. what you can do in a couple of months. So let me and set you up, Adam. So we got we got people listening. They're like, yeah, I'm that, I'm that, uh, I'm that guy. I'm a great engineer but I'm running my company. I'm not a visionary. I'm not out there. What do I need to do? You're doing it. This community and the coaching and watching these weekly, uh, these weekly community broadcasts where, we're, where I am a visionary. That is what I do. It is I naturally do it. You give me a button and say, Adam, you will make a million dollars if you push this button every day for a year. I'm going to struggle. <laughs> but if you say, Hey, you know, here's my marketplace. Here's what's going on. How do I challenge the status quo? I want to be that up and coming MSP. I want to be that sexy MSP. How do I do that? Listen to these community updates. Look at what we're telling you to do about the lessons learned about approaching your businesses to have business conversations and to do these things that maybe are a little weird because you don't normally have these conversations and they'll start making you cash. And if they make you cash, do it more. There you go. And so that's how we know it works. And so with the people who you are a great engineer, you are a great technology leader, but you are an integrator. If you lack that visionary component, if they lack a visionary in your company, then get some time with me, uh, get some time with Skip, or get some time with somebody who can think outside the box and say, what are my opportunities? This isn't natural coaching. This is just the normal one-on-ones that you guys are, have as part of your membership here. Just get those times and say, let's just have a visionary vision, vision setting session. Let's talk about your MSP. 
Where is it going? What are you doing with it? What does 2021 look like? How are you adjusting to the panic going on in fourth quarter? Note in these weekly broadcasts that we don't talk about how to better build a FortiGate. We are talking about how to change yeah. the narrative with your clients. And that's the vision setting we have. That's the humanized framework. When you look at the four pillars we have, they're all centered around abstracting out the technical conversation so you can sit in that room and have a business conversation and talk about where are we going. Now you're in a visionary setting. You have, it's forcing you into that. And that's where I want people to be. So just like I have to create processes that keep me honest, like if I don't, if I don't submit my receipts, if I don't balance out my uh, quarterly finances, everything goes to hell. I don't naturally do that. My accountant has to kick my ass and tell me to do it. I build those in because it's not natural for me. For everybody else, it's like, why wouldn't you do that? It's just something you do every day. I've got a pile of mail over here I need to sort through and categorize and put in places, but it's, it's a process I have to go through. And that's how I solve the problem. With a, with a lack of a visionary, you have to solve it in another way. If you don't naturally vision set, then you need to join coaching groups. Like there's peer groups in your local area that you can join. You can get time with me or with another visionary to talk about where are we going? What do we do? You can sign up for traction coaching. That's a great way to do vision setting. But you have to do something so you don't stagnate. Otherwise, you're going to be in the low bid game for the rest of your life or until your company folds. Yep. Because that's inevitably what happens with low bid games. You go as long as you can until you go bankrupt. If you aren't distinguishing yourself, if you aren't growing, you're dying. And in the, in, in the low bid game, that is a very dangerous place to be. At the point where you're trying to underbid everybody, unless you've got massive uh, scale on your side, you're just postponing the inevitable. Mm -hmm. But if you can market yourself as a boutique shop that is, that is uh, catering to the small business world, is catering to this ever-changing uh, economy that has a, a vested interest in helping their clients grow, that client won't care what engineer is serving them. They know that this, this company this MSP has their back yep. and they know it's being run by a Mike, a George, a Bob, and it's going to always have their back that you're going to constantly be there with them. So that that's, that's how you get there. If you're, if you're an engineer who's very good at your job, but really bad at visioning about forecasting and seeing what's coming up, get some time with a visionary, find one in your local area. It's a mentor. Get time with me. You're part of the HIT community. You have, you have time to do this. Um, I have my schedule open for HIT members. You are able to get in. I, I block out time just for you guys. It's included in your membership. I will help you vision set. It'll take me an hour. Give me an hour of your time. I will, give, I will help you do a vision set for 2021. And that's the beauty of all this. And it will fall right in line with those four pillars that you're already using, those, those tools that you already have very little effort. It's just a matter of you just got to spend time doing it. You got to spend time thinking about your future and where you're going as a company. That's not going to put you in the low bid game with everybody else. Yep. Investment investments yield rewards. And if you don't invest any time, then you're really not going to get much rewards out of it. Yeah. My, my big fear right now is that all these MSPs are, they're, they're patting themselves on the back doing operations and keeping their clients running, but they're, they're not helping with, where's the client gonna be in a year? Yeah. They're not part of that conversation and they're gonna get left behind. As soon as, as soon as cloud technology gets to the point where it's self-serving, where's your company? Yeah. People won't always need us, just like the computer technician. We don't need a computer technician anymore. We yeah. just buy a new computer. You just buy a new phone. It's cheaper than a computer technician. So what's going to happen to businesses when they reach that point? You got a vision set. You got to be preparing yourself for this new future where you are consulting and aligning business processes and helping them understand how technology is going to impact them and how this new generation of technology is going to be used in their company so they can get an edge. 
that's how you differentiate yourself and that's how you set yourself. But it's different for each one of you. Each one of your local economies is different. Each one of your niches is different. So you got to think creatively about what you have to offer in this growing marketplace. That's it. Anything else, Skip? No, no. I, you know, and it, it's fun to get in that mode. You know, I, uh, I have these spurts of visionary, but I, I mess up and not the visionary. I'm very much, you know, the, the operational and the integrator sort of role. And, and I have to say, you know, um, it, it's exciting to see what can happen. I mean, I, I know I've worked with enough visionaries and I know the process enough to, you know, line things up and, and I can, you know, I, I can build a process that makes me an, it makes me a visionary, even though I'm not really one at heart, I have the tools and the systems that can get me there and, and get me into that process and do the things that I want to do. And once I get there, then it, it's a, it's an easy place to stay because I'm just having business conversations and I, it, it's not expert business conversations. I'm just talking about their business. Yep. You know, what do they need? And, and then it generates the things that I'm really good at. Hey, you know, you're, 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 you know, dropping laptops all the time. We can get you some ruggedized stuff or, you know, you can't connect to that device easily. Well, hey, we, we can build a private network. We can make that happen, you know, and, and I come up with all these solutions, which is right within my wheelhouse. That, that's my comfort zone. So, you know, I get to do all the things I do well naturally. I just need to kind of get those out into a different environment so that they can expand uh, a little bit more. So it's, it's definitely not something that, you know, is going to be really hard for you to do or struggle to do on an ongoing basis. We can help you get there. Yeah. And remember, like, I wish I was more like an integrator. <laughs> I am not, this is not something that, um, that uh, is better or worse. It's just a piece of the puzzle. Some people are very good at running with firewalls. Some people are good at servers. Some people are good at talking to people. Some people are good at sales. Um, you just got to look at where your gaps are in your portfolio so that you can move forward. And for, for me, I wish, I wish I was more integrator ish. I wish I was more like Skip where he can like work on a great solution and, and really put it together. Like I I'll get bored like, and uh, I'll, I'll kind of fly off onto the next shiny thing. But I have, I have practices in place that keep me from doing that keep me disciplined. And so with you guys, just find that visionary setting. If you are not a visionary, then, and you see yourself as more of an integrator, which most engineers are, most fill that role because of your analytical mind. If you don't see yourself understanding like where do MSPs go? What's the inevitable next step? If you can't like confidently talk about that, then let's sit down and discuss it. And that way you can take what you do awesome with a visionary who is helping you understand what is next and whether you want to move in that direction and then you can make the call. You can make an informed decision rather than just reacting to what the culture is doing. This whole like following what is the best in industry, I, I, I am just not that guy. Yeah. I am more of a, I want to define what best in industry is. What's best for the business? What's best for your client? Yeah. And with that, I think, I think I'm gonna let everybody get going. Um, we actually went a little long today, 40 minutes. And I'll post this recording. I'll send the email out. Should enjoy the new fall festive colors to the weekly email. I always, I write that by hand, people. It's, it's not something I copy and paste. The, the weekly email, I try to keep it relevant. I try to keep it with the, uh, the video we have every week. And uh, you can always check it for what you missed if you did not attend. We have a lot of people who love to watch the recordings because you're just too busy. So, um, read the emails as well. The emails are all a review, what's coming up, and then a recommendations for the week, like what's going on actively. And I try to put an action item in there right now. The action item is get some fourth quarter coaching going. It will change your 2021. There you go. With that, I will let everybody head out. Give me a call. Sign up for coach with coaching at coaching at virtualc.biz. Get some time with Skip, and we'll talk through uh, how we can help you. See you guys later. See ya.